I guess we're like we need to take over. This is chapter 29. Just continue. Chapter 29. I have woken up to find living asleep, her body intertwined with mine, the warmth of her skin against me, her warm breath on my chest as she buried her face in my shirt. I gently brushed a strand of hair away from her face, taking the in the soft features. Her lips twitched into a smile, looking down at her at her in my arms. And then it hit me. The events of the previous night flooded back into my memory. I had crumbled in front of, of her, my composure slipping away as I revealed the secret I had kept hidden in for over a decade. In a mere five minutes, I bared my soul to her, confessing everything that had been weighing on me for years. Mm. I couldn't seem to tuck it away anymore. I used to be the best at hiding it, and when it became too much for me, I distract myself with work and unimportant things. But I don't want to run away from viewing. I don't want to distract myself when all I want is right here. I find myself opening up to her in a way that I never thought possible. My guard comes down like my guard comes down and my emotions spill out like a little kid. Like I would with my mom. It's both ex it was exaggerating and terrifying to be so vulnerable, but with her, it feels safe. I never spoke about my feelings with my father. He believed crying was weak. I remember the day after she had died, he found me crying and yelled at me. He called me weak and disappointing. There's more important things to be d dealing with. He yelled. Still wasting tears, get a grip on reality. I was seven. I didn't have any one after my mother died, and he never wanted to speak of her, refusing to even mention her name. It pisses me off to admit that I've become just like him, learning to bury my emotions deep down inside. I can still feel the weight of the of his words, the way they bury, the way they bury deep into my soul. He transformed me, molding me into a reflection of himself. And that's all I know. That's what I thought I had to be. I thought it was right. As I feel the emotion bubbling to the surface, I quickly reach for my phone, checking, checking for my update, checking for any updates on my current situation. My still, my spare had still, my spare has still holding viewing against me tightly. Various texts and missed calls from video, as well as links to articles of the event that took place nearly two years ago. I scoffed, this is unbelievable. Who even was the woman bashing cunt anyways? He couldn't have been that important. He had it coming. Amy stares in my arm, causing my eyes to look back down at her. My heart suddenly aches with Regret for every decision and move I made until the moment I finally agreed to meet her. Sleeping with random girls? Regret. Had I known of living existence, I would def never touch anyone besides her. M murdering someone? Regret. Now she's in trouble. This is so follows her everywhere. She goes in no matter how much she says. She doesn't hate me. She probably never look at me the same. My eyes turn back to my phone and I scroll past the links. Not being interested in it this early in the morning. Only to find a text from my father informing me on the cherry dinner being held tonight. No doubt Wing's parents will be there. Before heading out to take care of some business, I had left enough for Wing while she was asleep. 
in my bed, letting her know about the plan for tonight. And when I had returned a few hours later, I had found her in her bedroom, my eyes falling, my eyes falling upon her figure, standing up, standing by the mirror. She was in the midst of getting ready, looking beautiful as always. I don't know why I'm still shocked every time I see her. It's always the same reaction as the day I first saw her, as if I fall in love with her every time. She's wearing the Alexandra Dritch holster neck fitted black dress, St. Laurent rhinestone, and sandal pumps on her feet, with her long hair down straightened to her waist. As I stood at the, dro as I stood at the doorway, I couldn't help but admire her. She was slightly bent over carefully, placing the Van Cleef black diamond earrings in her ears. Thus, in her own world, she seemed obvious to my presence as I watched her through the mirror. Her beauty was captivating. I can't ever take my eyes off her. Suddenly, the straight, suddenly she straightens herself up and her attention eventually turns to me. She gives me a warm smile. How do I look? She questioned, giving me a little spin on the spot. Honest thoughts, she adds. I give her a smile. I don't think my honest thoughts are very appropriate. Like you've cheated. Like you've cheated God. I retort, my legs curving up into a smirk and my arms falling over my chest as I lean. Against the dark frame, my eyes still roaming over her body. You don't even believe in God, she states with a, with a frown, turning back towards the mirror. But I notice the way her cheeks flush a bright shade of pink and a small smile playing on her lips as she touches up her hair. She is right. I don't believe in God, but sometimes I find... Myself praying for her in her touch and thanking him every time I remember. I'm married to her. I've never believed in blessing before. I prefer to have dressed casually tonight, but for the sake of my father, I opt for the Bernardo Cucinelli white button up his sleeves, roll up to my elbows, and the first. She's button on done. Black Emporio Armani slacks and pair with black Jimmy Choo leather shoes. I may be 20, but my father still goes on my ass about my appearance. Eventually, she announced that she was ready to go and we made our way here. It took us about half an hour to arrive. After being stuck in New York traffic, but we eventually made it. I took Vivian's hand and led her through the buzzing venue, weaving our way through the maze of white rounded tables, the clinking of silverware, and the murmur of conversation filling the air. We eventually made it to our table. Our parents are really ready for us, as well as Finn. And his parents. All gathered Charlie dinners are the same bottomless supplies of cocktails, beer, and wine. And wine. The friend had already seemed to have taken advantage of, and, and of course, there was the grand meal, a full course feast. I greeted the parents with a polite nod toward my father and a firm handshake with the rest of them. He, on the other hand, was greeted with the. was greeted with affectionate. Back from her parents, a hug from Finn before we eventually settled down in our chairs. The night consisted of conversation, building foods and drinks. However, as the night progressed, a scene of restless <coughs> night progressed. A sense of restless began to, to set in. People leaned back in their chairs, feeling stuffed and somewhat bored. Enjoying something, at least watching as the as he lunges in his chair, reading 
and then using his chair, bringing the hundred glass of alcohol to his lips, not caring that his parents would scold him for his lack of table etiquette. It's for charity, he declares, throwing his hand in the air like it's obvious or true in any way. I rub my eyes before turning my attention to Vivian besides me. She got her head in her phone aimlessly scrolling through her head. Funny is scrolling scrolling through her feet. I wish I were my palms brushing over the top of her thighs before gripping the sides of the chair and pulling it closer towards me. She lifts her head from her phone, look at me confused. I lean down my lips, almost touching her ears. You're, you're right. I ask quietly, looking over her shoulder at her phone. I'd rather not be here, she whispers back, her eyes scaling the room. I hate these kind of things, she adds. This kind, this kind of shock to me. I had always imagined that she'd be the type to enjoy events in fancy social gallery, but she never fails to surprise me. There's not long left. We'll leave soon, I reassure her, whispering into her ear again before straightening myself up on the chair when the use of my name brings me back to the table. I participated in the conversation between my father and Vivi, keeping my hand on her thigh running my fingers up and down her leg underneath the table. And after a long dull conversation I had, I offered to take a walk with me to look at the auction item. Though it was an only excuse for a break from the table, I didn't really intend on bidding or anything. I was I was interested in a few thousand dollars here and there. I usually don't even bother to look at what I'm buying. I do... It, it for the charity, the people in need. We were walking along the tables, and while Vivian's browsing and inspecting, my eyes remain in her. The way her eyes light up, and the way she points to things to show me. I follow her around like a puppy until she erupts these stops in front of a massive painting. I don't know anything about paintings or their value, and I don't think we. Really They either, but with the pure excitement and joy in her eyes, it's obvious meeting. It it's obvious sometimes. It's obvious something about this painting means something to her. I take a look down at the base beneath it, and with the high price offer, I can only assume it's an expensive value. Valuable price. It is expensive and valuable piece. She pauses for a moment to look at it before to look at it again before going on her way without saying much, only feeling me in that it's rare for the others to sell their pieces and is readily available in local countries. I pick up the pen next to the sheet of paper and scrub with the highest possible price more than anyone could pay for a work of art anyways before casually catching up to her. After I action off a few more unrelated items, we return back to the table and now they announcing the winners. I lounge back on the chair casually waiting for the moment her name gets called out. And, and while I haven't said anything to Fran, he seems to have picked up on it from the looks he's been giving me f from across the table. When they mention the painting, I feel a twitch in the corner of my mouth, and then I hear Vinny's name ring out through the venue. What her con her confused voice comes from beside me. I turn my head in her direction, giving her a smile as a plus through the room. I could feel conf I could see the confusion etch across her face. She studied my face intently, as if searching for some sort of explanation, or understanding. Finally, she comes to the realization. What 
She repeats her words sound more enthusiastic, her voice ringing with excitement. Before I could respond, she leapt out of her seat and threw her arms around my neck, hugging me tightly. What do you do? She almost the words into my neck. With a giggle, I smile, holding her against with I smile, holding her against me with a hand on the back of her head. Feeling her warm breath running against my neck before she pulls away. She smiles as beaming the happiest I've ever seen her. It's the most beautiful, brightest smile I've ever, ever seen on a baby. And if I had to spend a million dollars more to see it again, I, will, I wouldn't hesitate to do so. She turns and shares her excitement with her mother besides her Beside her while her father sends me a proud smile from across the table. Friend gives me a particular friends give me a peculiar look, a teasing, you're in love. Look as if she, as if he's rubbing it, it in and laughing at me. I haven't told him my exact feelings for Vivini, but I wouldn't deny that I'm madly in love with her. I admit that Till the day I lie in my grave, and even then, I love her. Hell, I have it engraved on my tombstone too. It was only thirty million five hundred thousand dollars, which is around the limit. I I I had. I go high if I could. I'd buy ten of the pennies if she wanted them. She shows me another appreciative, excited, that smile again. Anything and everything for her. I had the idea of her sleeping in another bed. Then me, I've been lying in my empty bed in the dark for hours, staring at the ceiling. She was quick to disappear into her room once we got home, but I assumed she was tired and made. He drank a little, a little much tonight, so I, I didn't disturb her, but now I regret it. I desperately want her in here. Suddenly, I hear commotion coming come from her bedroom. With a second thought, I, lit, I leap on my feet and head down the hallway towards her bedroom. I swing the, the door open, finding her in the same position. I find her and most nights struggling to breathe and curl up in a ball in her bed. The room was silent safe for the, the sound of her labored breathing. I pushed her with a gentle stride, taking a seat on the edge of the bed. My fingers found their way to her hair, stroking with stroking it with a soothing touch. I spoke softly, getting her through the moment. As I always did, until I eventually just take the chance, scooping her up in my arms and heading back down to my room. I make it back to my bed and gently laying her down on the pillow. Her breath came in ragged gasp as she looked up at me with weary eyes. Are you sure? she asked. Her voice hesitant, barely above a whisper. I respond with a knowing look. She's the one, the only person I died to have in my bed, to feel her body next to mine, to breathe in her scent. As her eyes fluttered shut from exhaustion, I lay down beside her, drawing her small body into my arms. My fingers gently ran through her long length of hair, smoothing the hair as she drifted back off to sleep. I feel her head. Nestled against my chest, her breath gradually slowing until they match the steady rhythm of her heart, returning to a normal peace, the peace that I got m memorized in my brain. I lay here awake for another hour, t taking in everything about her as she peacefully sleeps on top of me. It's where that I get to have her this close to me, giving the little prick of a boyfriend who always seems to be clinging to her. I should probably feel a little guilty for the guy that I don't. 
I, I should probably feel a little guilty for the guy, but I don't. She's mine. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.